Hello everybody, I'm here with a video about quirk management and how I like to do it and how I think the best way to manage your quirks is. Now right now I'm on my old modded campaign. This one I stopped because it kind of got easy and it kind of got boring. This isn't on Blood Moon, this is on Darkest. And I use, this has a mod, the Anti-Grind plus larger size roster mod. Now, the problem with this is actually, I really don't like anti-grind. Because uh, it gives you bullshit like this. It's like, wow, a level four guy. And he has five negative quirks. Like, okay, I'm not gonna go into a mission when, with this. Uh, I might go in with this. On this guy, I might do that. Because uh, he doesn't do many blights or bleeds. He doesn't do any blights or bleeds. I'm not going in with that. Not going in with that. And I probably won't go in with that either. So that's at least three whole weeks that I'm not using this guy. And I'm going to find a new guy next week. I, know, I want this guy. Oh, I can't use that. Can't use that. Can't use that. So that's another three weeks. So, like, it just keeps going. And what you'll notice is... Alright, he... Alright, here we go. Three things all locked in. Two things. Three. Four, three, five, two, five, five, three, five. This is a bunch of just so fucking many. It didn't get overwhelming. It got overwhelming for me, which is why I kind of started a new campaign. And because I got better at the game. So then I don't have to play on Darkest to feel safe. Um, But the problem is, is that there's so many. And then with this anti-grind mod... It gets it so I just keep getting new things, and then I don't treat them all the way. It's just a problem. Um, so, on my... What I did, which you'll see on my next campaign, which is the one you're normally seeing, I aggressively fight quirks, and that has resulted in the campaign being much easier much less stressful. So I'll get to that. Now, notably, I have two big quirk mods installed. It is Marvin Sayo's quirk expansion pack, and then it is complex convuls compulsions. Now, quirk ex expansion pack is pretty self-explanatory, just adds a shit ton of new quirks. The complex compulsions, though, what that does, is to add, you know the, uh, the really fucking annoying ones? Like, you'll interact with food curios. Like, wow, great, that's fucking great gameplay there. But what that, what this mod does is it makes you might actually want to have those quirks. Like, this one, Curious. Uh, you have plus 20% scouting chance, which is fantastic. It means you don't actually have to run scouting items that much. Minus 20% chance party surprise. That's also great. You never want to be surprised. Uh, but what you do is you have a 20% chance to interact with every single curio which is actually really noticeable this guy if you have a party of these people it's oh it's a fucking pain but you know stuff like that you actually think wow maybe i want to keep this negative quirk and so the two things that i have uh i've done in this campaign is i've aggressively fought bad negative quirks and i've tried keeping good negative quirks now, what's a good negative quirk? Well, a good negative quirk is one like that, that curious one. I always like to keep curious because I prefer scouting chance. And then, oh no, I accidentally get cut on a, a glass cabinet. Like, whatever, that's fine. Um, another good one would be one that doesn't apply to a character. Like, if you have a crusader and then you get uh, something that's like minus range damage, I don't care. He doesn't have a ranged attack. So just let it let that lock in. What when you lock in that bad one, that or that good one, that doesn't mean anything, like minus range damage, you're not getting something that actually fucks you over and makes you spend a week in the sanitarium. Now, what I've done with the sanitarium is I quickly unlocked uh this patient cells. You just gotta get this up. Treatment library, patient patient cells. Medical devices is also useful. But not as much. So you got to just get this in the beginning. Get at least two things open as quickly as you can. And then every single bad quirk 
or every single negative quirk that is bad. Just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. I, what you'll see is I'm just going to go through here. I have two, two, zero, 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 one, one, zero, two. This one doesn't count. This is blocks, two negative ones. One, three, one, one. Like, it's just better. Before I was getting, you know, five. I have nobody with five. I have nobody with above three. And those three are actually good ones that I've allowed to stay. Just keep... It's daunting and it's expensive. But for after a while, you'll notice that you uh, you just don't have any negative quirks like me. And then you, when you get them, you get four people on a mission. You're not going to get four negative quirks. You'll probably, if you do, you'll get one guy with a disease. Then you can throw him in here, then the three people, and then you're done. You're already cleared of all the negative quirks that you have. And when you don't get four negative quirks, then you can throw a new guy in. And then you just keep doing this over and over again. And I've taken off the anti-grind. I still have larger roster. Obviously. 86. But. Without anti-grind. Which I thought kind of just took the fun out of the game. Honestly. Just getting free level 5 characters every week wasn't cool. Uh, I don't have people coming in with 5 bad quirks. So I can actually use them within a week or two. So it's really great. So what I'm going to do now. Is I'm going to go through some of my level 6 heroes. And I'm going to tell you the quirks that I've locked in positively and the ones and the bad ones that I've let stay. Starting with the Inquisitor, which if you know anything about this channel is that this Inquisitor is a fucking badass. I've kept Curious, which I just talked about. Kept Ignorant. I got this at level 6. I wouldn't... If you're at level 5, I would keep this. If you're at level 6, I would keep this. Otherwise, I would just want to level up. Because he's he can't level. So I don't give a fuck about ignorant. And that's fine. Hasty, this guy needs to be going first all the time. So I have hasty and I have on guard. Elder Chater, great. You always want, uh, if you're even if you're not playing modded, Elder Chater and Beast Hater. And then uh, Elder Slayer and Beast Slayer. Those are the best ones. Because the darkest dungeon missions, the, like the actual darkest dungeon missions, are full of Eldritch and Beast. And then uh, they're also spread out more. You only really find Unholy in the in the uh, ruins and then h human is not that good uh valiant you see these ones with the the weird symbol these are actually locked in one hero per roster this one i don't choose these and you can't you can remove them but you can't lock them uh, a lot of them are actually pretty bad they're like plus five speed if it has crimson curse bloodlust i don't want crimson curse bloodlust so, like, I don't really care about that. But this one's really good. I just happen to get it on this guy. I didn't, like, choose it. Uh, and then next, you have Sun... This is the Sun... Uh, Order of the Sun or something mod. This is also locked in. So, I have actually have five locked in trinkets on this guy. Or locked in quirks, sorry. So, this makes it... The best thing about this is that on Blood Moon, this makes your torch burn as if it wasn't Blood Moon. So, you get that extra ping or that extra uh square before you have to make a new torch to stay in highlight so this is great next we're on the rescuer this is more um class centric whereas like these i would just have on anybody bland uh cleansing tide and arietta these i believe uh, i believe are lamia skills cleansing tide and arietta so, you can't party this guy with a Lamia. But I don't actually give a single shit about that. Because the Lamia is a healer and a stress healer. Healer, stress healer. Never going to run the two of them together. So, I don't care. I want this. Because it's not something bad. Distress, this is getting solved right now. This is why he's in the sanitarium. Uh, this just gets shuffled out. I don't like this. This is great. Plus, bleed resist. Yep, can't complain. You get bloodless. Great. Best quirk in the whole fucking game is plus death blow resist, because you just don't want to die. The one resist you need is death blow resist. Which is great. Now, Hard Noggin's great on a rescuer because he stuns himself with this. I haven't leveled this up because he's at 98% and 125, so he's never actually gonna do it, and I get decent stress heal. I have another one where this is leveled up and sometimes it stuns him, sometimes it doesn't. I don't use that other rescuer as much though, so I'll still have to look into that. But this is also great. 
Uh, minus stress received, plus stun resist. Great. But what this is good for is gives a mark chance on hurting tactics, which I've said before. You hit all four people, you mark them, makes mark parties really great. Next, uh, like I said, Hard Noggin is really great. This one's actually okay if anyone's Eldritch. I don't think I'd lock this in. But, you know, uh, ones. stuff like this, I don't really care for ones that are like warrants only. Unless you're a... If you're a Crusader and you get Ruins, I would do it then. Or maybe an Occultist in the Cove. But other than that, it's just too specific. And you're min-maxing a guy for one dungeon, which isn't what you want. Uh, this is great. The Quirk Expansion Pack gives you stuff that has like human and eldritch or uh, beast and human or something like these double ones. These are really good, especially if they have eldritch or beast in them. That's when I would be using these. In this, speed. Uh, if torch is above such power, I love speed. Speed's the best attri attribute in the game. And I like to play on highlight. If I don't play on highlight, I'll bring a different crow. It's fine. Meek? I want Meek. Because he can't stun. So by using Meek, it's not like minus blight chance, which he constantly uses. If it was minus bleed chance, I don't give a fuck. Because food for the nest is the worst skill in the fucking game, probably. Holy shit, is this bad. Uh, on my next crow, we have Clarity, which is uh one of those the uh, Order of the Sun things I was talking about. There's a trinket. You wear it, and eventually it'll give you this. I think this is cheating. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like blocking stuff for free. I mean, it's cool, I guess. It doesn't wear off. It doesn't, it doesn't wear of. Sorry. Uh, this is the same thing. Human Eldritch, really good. Contract Killer. I've actually, I wouldn't mark. I wouldn't use this normally, but my meta is mark parties, so I actually, I am locking this in now. I would really not do it. Unless you always play mark parties, but I really I do that a lot. Uh, Hardy, this is great. Death blow resist while bleeding, and death blow resist while blighting is uh, I think it's called healthy. It's like the the counter the counter not the counter the uh, go one that goes along with this the co op one. Because the way characters die in this game is they get reduced to zero HP, and they have a blight or a bleed tick on them. So when you have more death blow. While you are, have a dot tick on you, you're less likely to die. Because the thing was with the crow, he's fast. He might be he might be going ahead of my healer. Which means I can't even heal him even if I want to. So this is a fantastic quirk. I would always lock this in. Like, without anyone, lock that in. Next I have my other rescuer. Same thing. I actually got uh, this is shitty Arietta one again. So keep that. Curious. Don't cheat. Uh, things that don't allow me to drink, don't allow me to gamble, make me worse at gambling, uh, don't allow me to visit the brothel. Uh, if it stops me from going into the bar, I don't give a fuck. The Abbey is way better. If it makes me only go somewhere, I don't want to go that. If it makes me only pray or meditate, that might. I don't want only meditate, I want to only pray. I don't really care about God fearing. That's kind of fine. I would still get rid of it eventually, but I would make that a low priority one. Now, born leader. This is another one of those ones. It kind of makes him a good like. If someone gets hit with a stress attack, he might de-stress them. Or if they miss an attack, he might give them a accuracy buff. Or if he gets hit, he might guard them. I don't like the guard. Be wary of this with uh, guards because he's a rescuer and he shouldn't be guarding because he has 31 HP. So just be careful. The other uh, one, the counterpart to uh, Hurting Master, I think it was called. Uh, this one, plus 15% damage, and now follow the track. Gains a bleed chance. The only Previously, it was only bleed chance versus mark, but now it just has it. This is okay. I'll, I like to keep it. It kind of it feeds into a niche. I don't follow the track. I think it's a decent ability. I don't use it all the time, but it's good to have. This, like I said before, uh, death blow raw bleeding, and this one is another one of the cure complex compulsions. Virtue chance is nice. I don't really care. 
because you're now at 35, so you're not going to get it anyway. <laughs> stress received, healing, and prayer is nice. If he gets high stress, I know I can just get him out of there. Um, obsessed with sainthood. There's not that many religious curios. So this is this is okay. I would, if you don't have this, it's not a big deal. I wouldn't say lock it down. I'd say lock in curious, but not this. You don't have to. This is good. You get fucking drink curios. Like you'll drink like uh, pond water in the cove. And you get five stress when idle in the town, which sucks. But, um, stress healing in the bar, I don't care about. But you get three speed. You get three speed for free. You don't even have to itemize for that. How fucking great is that? <laughs> this is amazing. Oh my god, I love this. I thought it was a disease at first. <laughs> Whatever. Alright. Next. Uh, armor piercing. This is good on some damage dealing classes. Not super beneficial and not super relevant all the time, but you know, this is nice. This is great. Accuracy and stun chance. This is good on a Hellion. I have one on a Vestal as well. Classes that can use stun. This is great for... Um, Everyone needs accuracy, and all stun classes need stun chance, so just use this. This right here is a Sunward Isles quirk. There's a fucking cow that you can interact with, and it'll give you this, and then you just kind of be like... It'll be, it'll be your turn to be like, I know how to kill them. And then you give everybody like 5% accuracy or 5% damage, or you debuff the enemies for... 5 accuracy or 5 dodge or something weird. It's kind of cool. It's free stuff. While this is out of your control, it always helps you. Whereas something like a born leader here, I could guard a guy that I don't want. I don't want to guard with this guy. So this takes a little bit of stuff out of my hand, which I don't like. I like being in control as much as I can because that means I'm not going to be fucking screwed over by shitty AI. That's also how you lose. <laughs> good old man Reynolds. I haven't used Reynolds in probably 140 weeks. His Crusaders aren't very good. Pyromania. St less stress received if you have a torch. If you always have a torch. Um, if you play low light, I guess don't use this. But, you know, whatever. Uh, my good old Sinua. There we go. Death blow while blighted. Lithe. This is an interesting one. If you have a high dodge class, maybe, like, you have 30 here, and you're only getting 6 dodge, so if your quirk is 6 dodge, that's kind of a problem. <laughs> um, like I said before, bad, bad gambler, I don't care, don't gamble. That's the easy thing I've ever done in my life. Humane? This is another one I love having locked in on stuff. Because she doesn't blight, and she doesn't bleed. So, having humane means you don't have, like, dud hitter, or something that you just kind of gotta get away. Or, you know, um, the yips. I don't want the yips. I want humane because she can't. It doesn't affect her in the slightest. I don't cheat. Oh no, you can't gamble. You're already bad at it. So this is just fucking double combo. Whoop de doo. And finally, uh, we're gonna look at this. Plague doctor, plus blight amount when applied. Oh fuck yeah. Uh, uh yeah. I guess you can use incision. You get more bleed too. Woo. Um. This one is interesting. Talented. Or one shot wonder. Uh, blight chance on the first round. You're already really going to be. You're not going to be like failing blights. And you're not. I guess you could fail stuns. But not on the first round you're not going to fail stuns. Because nobody has that 50% buff yet. Um, I don't think I'd use. I'd, I like this. But I don't think I'd really use it. And speaking of stuff like Slayer and Hater. Yokai. Don't get this. Yokai are exclusive to one dungeon they are in endless mode but like unless you want to bring a specific uh like pure yokai team for sunward isles and you're like i'm only using these four in sun sunward isles which i don't know why you would do that then don't lock in yokai hater i would still get rid of like yokai yokai pussy like if you're just really bad against yokai i would get, get rid of anything like that because if you don't watch out you're gonna get like uh like Beast, I don't know what the term is. Beast coward, minus five accuracy, plus ten stress against beast. Then you'll get, uh, like witch, witch hater, and then you'll get uh, or witch, coward. I don't know what the term is. And then uh, it'll just keep compounding, and you'll just get more stuff, and you can't really lock that out.
the best time to lock in stuff is if you find a caregiver's convention in the wield. Do that, and then get your highest level people and start locking in the good quirks. So every week, you need to fill up your sanitarium. Even if it's some guy you don't really use. Like, my shitty level 1 people, I haven't used him. Don't look at that. Like, I've used her once. Use this guy once. Use her, like, once. Like, but I, I still just get rid of this stuff. Um, like, it just, it just makes my life so much easier knowing I don't have to fuck with bad quirks and be like, oh no, I want to bring this guy, but he has a minus five accuracy versus everything in the goddamn dungeon. Not anymore. Like I said, it's expensive in the beginning, so get a bank. Bank kind of breaks the game. I just have, like, high money and I never lose it. But this is, if you want to see a better guide on the vanilla quirks, I would look at Filthy Robot. He's on YouTube. Great guy. Um, this is how I started getting way better at the game. So look at all of his content. But he goes through every single quirk in the base game and tells you how good or bad it is. I probably follow, I agree with 75%, um, if not higher, of what he says. But uh, don't th don't take it as gospel. But definitely look into it. It's a it's a useful thing. He'll have some similar tips to me. But anyway, see you guys around.